Hi, I'm uh, Ayn van Grauw and I'm one of the bird curators from the Natural History Museum uh, in Tring. Tring is a location outside London where the bird collection is kept. And the bird collection is kept, the scientific bird collection, in all those cabinets over here. Uh, the cabinets here next to me are the cabinets with the domesticated pigeons. We'll open them. And I will show you some varieties and explain something about domestication in pigeons. This is, for example, a nice example of two very extreme breeds. This is the short-faced tumbler, one of the favorites from Darwin. Um, because Darwin was somebody who inspired me in the way Darwin was interested in domestication, I am interested in domestication. Um, and of course Darwin had it from the point of view of evolution, um, how species can change. Um, of course that's in the back of my mind as well. I'm more interested in evolution to see what kind of genetic traits are possible in certain breeds. Um, this short-faced tumbler, as I said, one of the favorites from Darwin, um, is completely different from what we know, um, of how we know the wild ancestor of our domesticated pigeons, the rock dove. Um, I said it earlier, mutations, domestication, it all goes together, um, because mutations are certain changes in color, in shape, in whatever, um, that makes that the species, that an individual, look different from his other, um, or looks different from the normal species. Um, in the wild, of course, there is a selection on mutations. In captivity, domestication, there is a selection uh, done by humans. Uh, for example, all pigeons are grey, certainly there is a white one. People think, that is nice, we keep the white one, we start on breeding. Um, and then you have a whole stock of white ones. Then certainly, for example, a pigeon um, is born with fluffy feathers in his neck instead of nice and smooth. People think, that is nice, they start on selecting it. It's the same principle as evolution in the wild, in nature, but now it is done by humans. Um, Darwin used that um, to prove one of, well, not one, but several of his ideas. Um, I'm interested in domestication to see what is genetically possible in the species anyway.